Hello, and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. Today, we are going to talk about bearing pointers, how bearing pointers work and how you can use them with your instrument flying because they really make navigating with VORs a lot easier. So to get this actually started, I have to give a little background. My daughter is really good at using Scratch and on our home computer, she built a bearing pointer basically tutorial so that I could drag an airplane around and do demonstrations of bearing pointer use for you guys for my Aviation 101 loyal watchers. And I'm very excited to present her work because it is included in this video. So without further ado, let's take a look at some use of the bearing pointers on a G1000 equipped aircraft. So here in this video example, you can see that I've slowed it down there are two VORs that you can see here. There's a green one and a yellow one. She set it up where the green arrow is going to automatically point to the green VOR. Now you also can see a G1000 where a student is flying and the bearing pointer is pointing off to the left. There's actually two bearing pointers on the G1000. One is a double-headed arrow that is for NAV2 and one is for a single headed arrow, and that is for nav one. And you can see on this example, the student has tuned both of the VORs to the same nav aid. So those two bearing pointers are overlaid on each other. And they are that turquoise color. Now in this example, we are just barely passing that VOR. It's just 90 degrees to our direction. So it's basically, we are flying to the east of the VOR and the VOR is off on our west or on the left side of the aircraft. So you can see the arrow is pointing left. And as the aircraft flies farther and farther past the VOR, you can see that turquoise bluish bearing pointer begins to point more and more and more off to the side. Now, please ignore the heading. It doesn't actually line up with what my daughter made in the scratch program. The main point I want you to see is how the bearing pointer is pointing because in my little scratch program, it appears that we have a 747 because it's my favorite aircraft. It is going on a heading of north. But in this example, clearly the heading of the aircraft in the simulator is 130 degrees. Unfortunately, with the scratch program, she couldn't figure out how we couldn't figure out how to turn the little airplane model. So that is one example. And you can use the uh, bearing pointer to look at when you're a beam, a VOR. Okay, now I've got another example where I want to show overflying a VOR. And in this case, again, the bearing pointer, both of them are tuned to the same VOR. This was filmed in an aircraft. I apologize for it's a bit bumpy because we're in an aircraft. They are both pointing to the VOR. As we go over the VOR, both of those bearing pointers are disappearing. And then as soon as the aircraft completes its passage over the VOR, you see both the bearing pointers return, except for now they are pointing directly behind the aircraft. Once again, the aircraft's heading is not actually lined up with the little mini 747 in her scratch program, um, but just don't worry about that. My green arrow is pointing to the green VOR in this picture. And you can see on the G1000, both of those bearing pointers have come back in. They've kind of recentered. They are now pointing behind. So the bearing pointer always points at the VOR. That's what I want you to take away from this example. Okay. And then also, here is an example of the VOR overflight and pointing at another VOR while overflying. So here we have the green VOR over off to the southeast we have the yellow VOR ahead of the aircraft notice the yellow VOR has the arrow straight up the green is again pointing at the station as you fly over the yellow VOR that needle does its flip it's now pointing behind the aircraft the green one is still pointing behind the aircraft because it's just pointing all the bearing pointers do is point at the VOR so that's an example again of overflying a VOR and what it looks like with the bearing pointers and then I want to give you one more example. This one's a bit um, slightly more complicated, but it's basically what the bearing pointers can look like as you're flying an arc, for example. So here we have overflight of the green VOR. The green bearing pointer arrow turns. We fly over it and then say, for example, we begin flying directly to the 
yellow bearing pointer. Of course, our aircraft heading would actually turn, so we were going the right direction. But now the aircraft has intercepted essentially an arc. It is now arcing around the yellow VOR, and it is using perhaps it's 15 DME arc. Notice how the yellow arrow is constantly just pointing at the station and we are making many, many tiny turns as we fly around that VOR at a certain fixed distance. I'm just using 15 for my example. And now I'm going to have the aircraft track away from the VOR on a given radial. I can still do that with a bearing pointer. I just have to pick a radial and then as we fly away from the VOR, you can see it move. And hopefully that was a helpful overview of bearing pointers. Thanks for watching Aviation 101 with Laura. Love to know what you think about it. Put some comments in there. I read them all. I try to respond to pretty much all of them and answer questions and have a fantastic day.